each motorcycle has its own identity, characteristics that make it unique and fun to ride once you figure out the techniques needed to harness its full potential. That isn't to say that motorcycles don't have their shortcomings. When the Domina 400 was recently launched by Bajaj, it created waves of excitement and anticipation. We've decided to pit it against a motorcycle that created similar levels of hype when it launched, the Royal Enfield Himalayan. This is going to be a showdown of design, versatility and value. After all, both these motorcycles are designed with touring in mind, hold the attention of riders with a similar sort of mindset and fall within a similar price bracket. The Domina 400 is styled along the lines of a new age naked sports tourer while the Himalayan is clothed in adventure tourer garbs. But Bajaj have decided to call the Domina a power cruiser. Its headlight setup appears quite beefy but it looks mature and proportional and with those mosaic like LEDs it looks fresh and appealing. When viewing this duo alongside each other, although the Domina does have muscular styling, it's clearly the more compact of the two and the Himalayan with its adventure-oriented styling, has a sort of raw and rugged charm. Its purposeful and bare-bones stance may not appeal to riders that prefer the smooth and flowing lines of the Domina. Bajaj have given the Domina 400 a split instrument console, with the handle-mounted one being all digital and quite easy to read, and the tank-mounted LED strip housing the warning lights. However, with a full-face helmet on, the tank strip is below your field of vision and becomes hard to see. The Himalayan keeps things simple with its instrument cluster. Although it does look a bit cluttered, it gets an analog speedo, taco and fuel gauge and gets a digital readout for the odometer and trip meters. The Himalayan also gets a temperature gauge, a gear indicator and a digital compass for when there isn't a road in sight. Bajaj's fledgling appears to have the better tank design of the two. It appears well sculpted and mature. The Himalayan's teardrop-shaped tank is designed to accommodate riding in the standing position to make off-road riding easier. The Domina's tail end looks nice and thick and sports Bajaj's typical vertical twin-strip setup, while the Himalayan gets a raised rear fender in keeping with its off-road friendly theme. The Domina's split seat setup is wider and it gets a very neutral seating geometry with a slight lean into the handlebars. The narrow seat on the Himalayan is also reasonably comfortable and although the bike seems so much taller, it shares its saddle height with the Dominar at 800mm. We already know that the Dominar's engine is a single overhead camshaft derivative of the 373cc KTM Duke and RC390 engine. It has over-square bore dimensions and comes with Bajaj's triple spark technology. And while this fuel-injected liquid-cooled engine may produce less power than the KTM, it's no slouch at all. It feels punchy and strong and pulls in a very linear manner to its rev limiter, which is close to 10,000 RPM. Gear shifts up and down the 6-speed gearbox feed in with a precise, light feel. The bonus here is that the Dominar also gets a slipper clutch, which steps in to allow hard downshifting from high speed. The gear ratios feel just right and are perfectly matched to the engine's long legs. In fact, overall, the Domina encourages you to ride it hard and this is where it feels quite in its element. The Himalayan's engine on the other hand, this 411cc single cylinder unit with under square dimensions relies on a simple layout with a single overhead camshaft and two valves. It is fed via a carburetor with a throttle position sensor and produces 24.5 horsepower that is driven towards the rear wheel through a 5-speed gearbox. Although this gearbox may feel a bit notchy when shifting at the wrong RPM, which is a hassle when riding in city conditions. The tall gear ratios ensure a cruising agenda when on the road and when off the road, the taller ratios mean you don't have to shift gears too much. Once you spend a bit of time in the saddle, one thing that becomes apparent on the Dominar is the vibrations. Anything past 4000 RPM will have a light buzz that creeps in from the handlebar, seat and foot pegs. The Himalayan isn't vibration free either, but it simply isn't as noticeable as on the Domina. 
One place the Domina really shines is in the braking department. The 320mm disc at the front and the 230mm one at the rear do a phenomenal job of bringing the motorcycle to a halt. The front brake feels sharp and precise, while the rear one feels more progressive. Coupled up with the MRF, the Rev C1 tyres and the twin channel ABS, our V-Box figures reveal the Dominar comes to a complete stop from 60 km per hour in just 2.02 seconds and 17.20 meters. The Himalayan's brakes on the other hand tell a slightly different story. While it gets a slightly smaller front disc at 300mm and a slightly larger rear one at 240mm, it simply cannot keep up with the Dominar in sheer stopping power. Quite in contrast in fact, the front brake feels more progressive while the rear brake feels sharp, which may not be that great on the road, but off-road, this setup actually works well and keeps the front from locking up while the rear does and allows you to tighten up your turns and use it to steer. While it is amply clear that the Dominar is the sportier handler of the two, the soft suspension setup on the Himalayan means you're just going to glide over bad roads. A place where the Dominar's stiff setup does make sure things get quite bumpy. The Domina gets a set of beefy 43mm telescopic forks at the front, while the rear is armed with Bajaj trademark Nitrox two-stage adjustable monoshock system. While the stiff setup will make riding over bad roads quite a hassle, the flip side is that the firm setup is what gives the Domina sporty handling and excellent high-speed stability, and the bike turns into corners with a fuss-free neutral manner. The Domina 400 gets a perimeter-type frame, formed from steel spars and backed up by a precision-pressed steel swing-up. The chassis setup is what makes the weight of the motorcycle feel so well distributed. It's hard to tell that the Dominar at 182 kgs has exactly the same curb weight as the Himalayan. The Himalayan's weight is a bit more noticeable. This does feel like a large motorcycle. The chassis is a steel semi-double cradle frame, while suspension duties are taken care of by a pair of 41mm conventional forks and a single rear shock. Both ends deliver relatively long travel, 200mm at the front and 180mm at the rear. What this means is that on the road, there's not much you have to slow down for. And even though this is such a tall motorcycle that has a more rugged, dual-purpose tyres, it handles corners wonderfully. The rigid chassis setup means you can dip into corners and the Himalayan holds its lines well and gives you the confidence to lean in deeper. Although, the large 21-inch front tyre means directional changes are not going to be very quick. Off-road is where the Himalayan really comes into its element. Although the front end does feel a bit too soft and restricts the amount of feedback you need, and if you manage to get a bit of airtime, the suspension does bottom out on landings. Royal Enfield has designed its adventure bike with touring equipment in mind, so the frame includes anchor points for panniers and their supports. Although these motorcycles have been designed with touring in mind, they both have vastly different strengths and weaknesses. While the Himalayan may appeal to more adventurous, seasoned and mechanically sound riders, the Domina 400 is simply the more well-rounded modern-day package. This is a motorcycle you can swing your leg over, ride hard all day and not worry too much about mechanical issues. Aside from it having a bit of a jarring ride, it offers more modern features that make it a safer motorcycle. And let's not forget that resounding price tag. And if you consider the non-ABS base variant of the Domina, it costs about 20,000 rupees less than the Himalayan. So at the end of the day, Bajaj have made a great motorcycle for a phenomenal price tag.